Welcome along and thank you for joining us for this really lovely lesson where we're going to be creating beautiful textured dynamic seascapes based on the work of British artist Maggie Hamlin. If you're not familiar with Hamlin's work, here's a few examples of some of her incredible seascape paintings that we're going to be using as our starting point for today's session. So we're going to be using cardboard for this lesson. Have a look around the house and see if you've got an old cardboard box that you can cut up. It doesn't matter what size you want to work. Um, you can go quite big or you can, you know, just cut up a small piece around A4 size. And carrying on the cardboard theme, we're actually going to be painting with cardboard tools. So you can see in this picture, we've just cut a couple of rectangles and peeled off the top layer of one of them to reveal the really lovely corrugated texture and we've also got a more pointed tool um, so we can actually get some finer marks and finer details. We've even got overexcited and made a cardboard palette with a thumb hole which is great fun. If you decide to make your own cardboard palette just be prepared that it may well end up even more exciting than your final piece which is what happened to us with this tutorial. So once you've got a palette of some description, you're going to need to squeeze out some acrylic paints. We've got a range of blue paints here, um, some brown, some black, some white, some green, and a little bit of yellow. We've gone for quite a warm sort of cadmium yellow rather than a lemon yellow. Before you start on your big piece of cardboard, it's a really good idea to just practice creating different kinds of marks with your cardboard tools on a spare bit of cardboard. See what type of effects you can create by mixing the colours directly on the surface, um, layering colours on top of each other and using different tools to create different textures. So when you're ready to start, you may want to print out or have handy um, a few examples of Hamblin's seascapes to provide inspiration while you're working. But I would really strongly advise you not to try and copy her work mark for mark. It's just an impossible task and really what you want to be doing is creating something yourself and creating something original. I would also recommend that you have some photos of seascapes, ideally ones that you've perhaps taken on holiday. Um, if not, some reference material from the internet will be fine, um, just so that you've got an idea of the type of scene that you want to make. So for this example, George is starting off with one of the rectangular tools and just laying down a bit of a blue ground to work on. Now he's starting to layer up with some darker tones. So he's mixing the blue and the black together on his tool and that's mixing together further when he applies it onto the cardboard. So he's really loading up that tool and smearing the paint on so that it's starting to build up some nice thick textures. So play around with some of the different tools, maybe use the corrugated edge to create extra texture and start to build up the painting in layers. Really what's most important with this work is the experimenting with different tools and also exploring how you can layer paint to start to create a really physically textured piece as well as a visually textured piece. So to clarify what I mean, when we talk about texture in art, there's two types of texture. There's visible texture, which is something that would appear visibly textured, even though the surface may actually be flat to the touch. And there's physical texture. So if you actually ran your hands across the work you would feel all the bumps and all the marks with your fingertips. The nice thing about working with cardboard tools is that you can just snip off the end 
of the tool if it gets um, a bit too wet or you want to add a new colour and then you've got a nice clean surface to work with. And that's what George has done here before he starts to apply the white. So you'll notice he's starting to build up all the white areas now and the painting is beginning to look a little bit more like a seascape. And the beauty of working like this is if you make some marks or you put some colour where you don't want it, you can just wipe it away or build over the top with another layer of paint. It all adds to the beautiful texture of the work. If you look closely at how George is applying the paint, it's almost like he's printing with some of the tools and layering the paint on to the cardboard rather than making big painterly brush strokes. So a palette knife is great for doing this if you want to try this sort of technique again and you happen to have a palette knife, you can actually place paint on in daubs so you're not actually blending everything together. If you really want to use palette knives and brushes, of course you can do whatever you want, that's fine. But I think it would be quite nice for you to challenge yourself to just use cardboard and see what you can do. We're just going to finish by showing you some close-ups so you can see the types of marks and the thickness of the paint and the beautiful textures that George has created. So give this a go at home. If you've got the space to work on a nice big piece of cardboard um, and maybe it's a nice dry day and you can work in the garden, why don't you create an absolutely huge wave making really big marks where you're moving your whole arm and your whole body in the direction of the wave to create this lovely sort of gestural, exciting movement. And equally well, if you haven't got the space and you need to work smaller, you can produce something that's a little bit more contained like this piece here. Don't forget to let us know if you are having a go at any of these tutorials at home and please do share your work with us online. Thanks very much for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe and please tell your friends about these free videos that they can try themselves at home.